Hey guys, my name is Mike, and I'm going to teach you how to use ZBrush in 12 minutes. So we're going to go over the basics and try to get you familiar with as much of the user interface as possible. Uh, if you haven't already gone over to Pixelogic's website, uh, go to pixelogic.com, click on Get ZBrush, and try ZBrush, and if you scroll down, you can download a free 30-day trial of ZBrush 2018. I recommend you do this so you have all the newest features. Anyway, we're gonna get started. So if you go ahead and minimize this and open up ZBrush, uh, when you first open up ZBrush, you see this little splash image here that's like, ZBrush 2020, everything's new. You can just close that, you don't need that. Um, when you first open everything up, you see you've got a lot of information here, but you'll learn all this in time. It's not that intimidating once you just kind of understand where everything is. So on the left side, you've got your brush and all of these other features. On the top, there's the sliders and dials for your intensity and your brush size and all of that stuff. We'll get into that. Uh, on the right side is your tool menu, which we'll use a lot. Uh, and here you see already the light box is open and the light box is where your files are stored. Um, so if you want to open a project, you can do that through the light box. You can also click on your recent and you know, anything you were working on last is stored in there. Uh, they also have some pre-made models that come with ZBrush that you kind of see the hierarchy of how all the pieces are put together, which is really useful, but we're not going to use that today. So if you just click on light box, it'll close it. And this is ZBrush. So in the center, you've got your canvas on the right side where this tool menu is. Um, a really important thing to know is that any of the menus that you have on the right side, or even if you can dock them on the left, but I do it on the right. Um, say you accidentally get rid of one and you're like, oh no, where's my tool menu? All of these menus up here can be customized and be, can be opened up and dragged and docked on the right or on the left side. If you want to dock it on the left, click on this little divider, double click it, and you have a second little panel here where you can dock more menus. So there's a lot of space. If you want to put custom brushes, you can customize your user interface as much as you want. So we'll close that for our purposes starting out we're going to click on the simple brush and go up to the tool palette here and if you click on that it opens up all these options and these are all of our 3d objects down below you've got two and a half d objects which we're not going to deal with right now not for this uh, today we're just going to focus on 3d so if you select a sphere and you click and drag anywhere on your canvas it'll draw a sphere and it doesn't matter how big it is it just has to be one sphere so now if you go up here to this tab here and you click edit the next thing you have to do is on the right side under the tool menu you have to click make poly mesh 3d and by doing this it's telling zbrush that this is ready to be sculpted on so go ahead and click make poly mesh 3d and now if you go to the left side here and select any brush i do the clay buildup brush that's a really good one you can now start sculpting directly on your sphere these are the steps to just get you started with a 3D object right away where you can start sculpting, take something really fast and just kind of draft up something really quick. It's a good idea just to learn the navigation of ZBrush. Clicking and dragging around is how you rotate. If you hold the Alt key and you left click and drag, it's gonna pan or move your object like this. And now zooming is really weird in ZBrush. Uh, while you're holding Alt and clicking and dragging, just let go of Alt. And now when you move up and down, it allows you to zoom in and out. It's kind of a weird feature, but you get used to it. You just kind of have to practice with it. Another really useful uh, function for navigation is the snap tool for whichever view you're looking at. So in the top right, your, your head here shows you which direction you're facing. Also go over here to the right and turn on the floor, and that will show you where the bottom of your object is. That's really helpful for, you have the floor on all the time. Um, very, very useful. And that also shows you when you're on this side view, hold shift, click and drag and it will snap to whichever view and you can see now that our our ground plane is completely at 90 degrees perpendicular here from the side view when you first create an object um, you see all of these menus pop up over here after you clicked on the make poly mesh 3d button you get all these menus subtool geometry this is where you're going to be spending most of your time in zbrush uh, where all of your functionality is kind of stored all the different things that you're going to be doing with all of your models so um, eventually you'll learn what all of these menus are for, but that's where a lot of what you're going to be doing is, uh, is stored in ZBrush. So on the top here, you have your sliders for your brush. 
Um, the focal shift is going to change the inner ring of your brush. As you see, you click here and it makes it smaller or bigger in the center. So you have your draw size up here so you can make your brush much bigger if you wanted to draw a huge on your object. Hit Control Z. Uh, the intensity is really important because if you put this all the way down, it's going to be really light and it's barely going to make any changes. Whereas if you put it all the way up uh, really high on your object, it's going to make a very dense change. There's add and subtract. So uh, when you have add turned on, when you're drawing on something, it's going to obviously add geometry there. And if you hit Z sub, it's going to subtract geometry. And the shortcut for this, if you're drawing, if you just leave Z add on and you hold down the alt key, when you draw, it's going to subtract. On the top, you see next to edit mode and draw mode, you have your move and scale and rotate. So when you click on move or scale or rotate, you see that it comes up with a little shortcut key for each one. So move is W, scale is E, and rotate is R. Actually included a very handy feature. When you're in any of these three options, they're all included in this gizmo here. So the center, the yellow, if you click and drag, that's your scale, your scale tool. And you can scale by clicking the little blocks on any axis and it will just scale in that direction alone on your object. And the little rings surrounding your object are your rotate. So essentially you don't even have to hit W or E or R to switch between them. A lot of the time I'll just hit W and put it into move mode. And you can access your scale, your main scale right here, and your rotate, and your move without even having to switch. So that's very, very handy. You can hit this little unlock button on the gizmo. And what this does is it allows you to move the gizmo itself, just the gizmo and not your object. So if you wanna be able to lock your gizmo wherever in whichever position you want, then you would go back and click on the lock and now your gizmo is locked and your object is the one is the thing that's moving. Um, the reason we do this is if your gizmo is positioned over on the right side of your object, when you rotate your object, it's going to rotate based on where that gizmo is at. And that is going to allow the object to pivot on the gizmo at its location, wherever it's centered at. So a really important feature when you're dealing with this gizmo um, is being able to reset it. So if you unlock your gizmo and you're over here and you're like, oh, I wanted to move the object from this point, And then you're like, oh man, uh, I don't want it to rotate anymore off of this axis, uh, hit control Z. You can unlock your gizmo, hit the go to unmasked mesh center button, and that centers it in the middle of your mesh. Then you lock it and it's back to the center of your object. So that's really, really handy when you're manipulating a 3D mesh. Um, also, if your object is way over here and it's not in the center of your grid anymore and you need it right there back in the middle, just uh, with your gizmo locked, hit the home button and it brings your mesh back to the center of your grid again. We want to be able to sculpt on this, so <clears throat> we need to get out of move mode. So if we hit Q or we go up here and we click on draw, that's going to activate your brush menu. And in here you can see it's kind of intimidating at first, there's like 50 brushes. But that's okay. They're all for really specific things. So for basic sculpting, you're probably only going to use, you know, like five or more of them. Um, you know, like the clay buildup brush is really useful. The move brush is extremely useful. But um, if you're wanting to access your brushes really quickly, there's hotkeys for all of that. So if you press B, that brings up your brush menu. And then you hit alphabetically whichever brush you want. So if I want clay buildup, that starts with C. So I hit C. And every one of these brushes has its own hotkey. So that's for clay buildup, that's B. So I would push B and then C and then B again for clay buildup. And that's going to draw on my object. If you want to activate symmetry, hit the X key and that activates symmetry on your object. So on both sides. And if you want to change your brush size, uh, you can hold down the space bar and you have your size and your intensity and all that right here. Or for size, you can push S and drag the size of your brush a little bigger if you want. So the move tool is really handy for manipulating objects very quickly if you want to make a head or you want to do, you know, some very uh, quick sort of sculpting. Also on the left side here, you have your brush and you have your alpha. The alpha is just the shape that 
It's like a pen. Uh, at the tip of the pen is just a different shape depending on the alpha that you pick. So if I pick a little point right here, you see how it's kind of uh, more dense in the center and it softens as it goes out toward the edge. That's gonna create a much smoother, more accurate straight line wherever you're sculpting. Uh, the material, this is important to know about because all it's doing is you're not changing your object, you're just changing the way that ZBrush views your object. By picking any of one of these materials, you have chalk, for instance, so the light is going to bounce off your object differently. At least the, the, the lighting that ZBrush is showing you right now. You can pick chrome and that's going to, you know, so some of these are more reflective and some of them are flatter. And down here is the color palette, the color picker, I should say. Um, you can click on one of those and it'll change the color on your object. But we're not going to do that for right now. It's not something we have to worry about. It's a good thing to know later on how to deal with your color palette. If you mess up, by the way, and you pick a color, say you're like, oh man, now my object is dark red and I don't, I can't see anything. Go up here to color and click on white and you're back to normal. Now, if you accidentally go down here and you switch the color, it's gonna to switch to black, so you can't see anything. So maybe press switch color and it'll switch back to the opposite. So that pretty much sums up everything that you need to know to get started in ZBrush. Um, so let's go through the steps again in order. So you still got an object on your canvas here. So what you need to do is you need to click edit mode and turn it off, hit switch, and hit control N. That's gonna clear your canvas. So from the beginning, we went to the simple brush, selected a sphere, click and drag your sphere out anywhere, go up here and hit edit mode, go over to the top right under your tool menu and click on make poly mesh 3D. And now you can select any brush that you want and just start sculpting right away. And that, well, let's go hit X to activate symmetry and our brush size here. And that is how you get started on your mesh quickly and simply in ZBrush. There's uh, one more feature that I forgot to mention too is at the top here you see this little bar and if you were to click back on it, this is your history bar. So you can actually undo or hit Control Z and you see that this slider actually moves along as you're doing Control Z and you can move forward and backward through this timeline now you understand the basics of ZBrush, moving, scaling, rotating, and the basic navigation. Those are the most important things. If you take some time outside of this video and practice those on your own time, it'll save you a ton of time and effort, and it'll make it so much easier for you to use this program in the future. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about a feature called DynaMesh, which if you see here is extremely useful when your polygons get all stretched out. It's excellent for evening out the topology on your mesh or on your character but i'm going to talk about that next week thank you again for watching if you guys like this video or found it helpful please give me a like and subscribe to my channel and you can leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or let me know if i forgot anything because you know nobody's perfect i will see you guys next time thank you